Mount Gay recommissions its coffee still, with Prime Minister Motley indicating that it helps position Barbados in the international business sphere. The island's new corporation tax structure seen as a sign that Barbados is on track. And in sports, Shea Hope scores another ton, but Bangladesh take the series. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. And a very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, there are opportunities for Barbados to maximize how much it earns in the rum sector. And that's the word from Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley as she addressed the recommissioning of the Mount Gay Distillery's coffee still in St. Lucie. Lisa Boom has the details. 42 years after it was decommissioned, the old coffee still at Mount Gay Rum Distillery is now officially back in action. Managing Director of the Distilleries, Raphael Grissoni, told the official ceremony they acquired the still about four years ago, and since then it has been a labor of love to bring the operations back to their full glory. Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley was on hand to unveil the plaque to the production plant. She congratulated the Remy Cointreau team for ensuring that they take advantage of the entire process. Ms. Motley notes that this allows Mount Gay to maximize on the profit it makes, but it also helps to position Barbados favorably in the international business sphere. The ability for us to be the place for the home that owns the entities is part and parcel of our latest exercise, such that we converge international business and domestic business because we have come now to accept that our business is the world and the world is our business. That there can be no difference between what we seek to produce locally or internationally, but Barbados must be a global hub for all enterprises. She's warned them against reinventing the wheel, noting that there are many other opportunities to be had in that sector to make money. Plantation houses in our country need to be the subject of a deliberate plan, whether for international business, whether as museums, living museums, whether as places for different types of activity, such as is being considered for some of our factories and plantations with respect to heritage assets for tourism. The still at the Mount Gay facility has been named after one of its longest serving employees, Reynold Blues Hines, who started working at the St. Lucie plant from 1965 at age 16. Blues started in mechanics, but was eventually responsible for the entire distilling process. I feel great because I deserve to have something now for me all this time and all this energy into these things. At least I can be commissioned with something. The name Blues always stay with me, with me all the time. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Barbados new corporation tax structure has been hailed as a sign that the country is back on track. And that's according to Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Dale Marshall. He was leading off debate in the lower house on the International Business Company's Repeal Bill 2018. He says the new regime will help make Barbados a first choice for business, especially from the region. It also allows Barbados to be attractive as a domicile for businesses across the region. And already, sir, I think there's been a lot of interest expressed in having companies move to Barbados. At one point in time, Mr. Speaker, in our last administration, we were looking to see whether we could establish Barbados as a headquarters basis. The Attorney General says on this occasion, government was forced to act quickly to revamp the tax structure to meet the OECD deadlines. And Mr. Marshall says that they will also be moving ahead soon to deal with other financial and legislative matters. There's more legislation that will come that will come quickly. Because in terms of our money laundering and anti-terrorism finance measures, we have to meet a March 31st timeline. So as soon as we get past this, we will be, be, be running at full speed towards trying to deal with those things. But the extra effort it takes of us is worth the benefit 
of saving our country. Well, Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy, Kirk Humphrey, who rose in support of the bill, was critical of larger companies, he says, who do not understand their social responsibility. want to treat people in all kinds of ways in the Christmas season. It bothers me, Mr. Speaker, sir. And, and, and these are things that we must not allow. We must not allow it, Mr. Speaker. Sir, it is wrong. And, and we cannot say on the one hand that we are a country and a government and a people that believe in the cause of the underdog and then allow people because they have a little bit more means to come and treat people in ways that no Barbadians should be treated. It is wrong, Mr. Speaker, sir. And Minister Humphrey is confident that Barbados will attract more than enough investors and tourists in order to pay its bills. While well, a national dialogue will be held next year to review the island's entire tax position. And that's the word from Minister of International Business and Industry, Ronald Toppin. He told Parliament that the necessary reforms will be enacted later. In the face of opposition concerns that pressure is being placed on Barbados, he says that government is satisfied it has taken the right steps. We have made a bold stride. We are already being watched by some other jurisdictions, um, some of whom have said that Barbados as usual has stepped out first off of the blocks and we are to be commended and that they are likely to do the same thing. Some other jurisdictions, at least one for sure, and I understand there are others have made that statement, that they salute Barbados and they themselves, I'm not talking about, sir, about some one or two no tax jurisdictions. Going forward, Mr. Toppin stressed Barbados is making itself competitive and is moving to ensure that the international business sector is once again at a level where it makes a real contribution to the economy. He says the country is not only seeking to promote or sell a tax rate. That is not Barbados' only intention in this exercise. As indicated by myself and others, we are also going to be looking to tidy up a number of other things, particularly the ease of doing business in this country and some other related issues, sending, offering global excellence, Mr. Speaker, with Barbadian values, quality service we intend to sell in addition to just a tax rate. Well, an upcoming collaboration between governments and the social partnership could mean that it becomes much easier to do business in Barbados. Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Marsha Cattle, has revealed that a competitiveness council will be established. She says while creating a better business environment on the island has been a hot topic for a while, it's time to stop paying it lip service and get to work. Minister Cattle says that this will benefit not only the larger corporate entities in the private sector, but small and medium enterprises as well as consumers. This competitiveness council once established will work alongside the Ministry of Economic Affairs and the economists there to be able to very easily and simply go to where the, the challenges are and to be able to identify what is needed to be able to remove some of those obstacles. Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Trade, Senator Sandra Husband, says her ministry has been busy identifying new global players to conduct business with. She told Parliament in order to compete in the international business sector, Barbados must move quickly to establish these new relationships. You have to look at the Middle East where the new oil wealth is. And we have to be able to identify from among those new players who are some of those persons that we need to build the necessary relations, establish a memorandum of understanding, create treaties, do um, tax information sharing agreements with them, double taxation treaties, so that we are able to attract people from these other jurisdictions. Because gradually, as those conditions and the players in the field change, they may be players that may not support OECD action. 
Well, some workers retrenched by government could find employment during the construction phase of the new administrative building at the Bridgetown Port. Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy, Kirk Humphrey, alluded to this as ground was broken for that new $20 million four-story one-port place building. The new building is expected to serve hundreds of staff and will be home to the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy. Hundreds are estimated to be employed in various stages of the building's construction. Well, we wouldn't be sure of the numbers as yet, um, but I am happy to say that it will be a significant number of people. There are going to be 200 people here, depending on the skill sets, because not every person is going to have the, the necessary skill set to do the job that's here. But if it is some, a job that somebody who's been in the service could fill, then they'll be here. Of course, there are also people who hadn't been working who also want the opportunity to work. So we're not going to monopolize it with only persons who were in the government, but a significant share of persons who were in the government will be working on the project. And Mr. Humphrey says officials have ensured that the new building utilizes renewable energy. For us, we felt that to have a renewable energy base was also very important. 50% of the energy as it stands will be done through solar panels. We are hoping to have that up to 100% um, very soon after the project is started because that has to be the base for everything that we do in Barbados. You can't have a 2030 fossil fuel free environment and a new building that is not using um, renewable energy. So. I'm satisfied that we will be able to rectify a lot of the wrongs in the past. And also I think government just has to have a way of maintaining its buildings. You know, If you see something go wrong, you have to fix it when it's a small thing. And a lot of the problems we've had was poor maintenance, but we've, as a government, even beyond this building, as a government, just a commitment to maintain our buildings in a much better way than we have in the past. One of the former front runners in the race for Anglican Bishop of Barbados has been sworn in as an independent senator. Senator Reverend John Rogers, who is also rector of the St. George Parish Church, was installed by Governor General Dame Sandra Mason during a ceremony at Government House this morning. He replaces former Senator Reverend Michael Maxwell, who was chosen a few weeks ago by the House of Bishops as the bishop designate for Barbados. Senator Reverend Rogers told the media he is humbled by the honor. I would wish to express, express my sincere gratitude to Her Excellency for the confidence vested in me and for affording me the opportunity to serve the nation at this level. Um, I believe I'll have to get my feet wet first to see all that it entails, but certainly I'll be bringing the years of expertise in the various fields which I've studied uh, to bear on the the matters that will be coming before me. And he believes he will be able to balance his new duties along with his service to the church. The church in her wisdom gave me a, an assistant curate just recently. So that will help me very much in terms of balancing my work at St. George and in the rural deanery of St. John. But also I believe it will be complementary rather than opposing. Well, even though they could not attend the Independence Parade last month, two students of the Erdison Special School have still been given their leadership badges. Head girl Jazara Holder and head boy Renako McMillan received the badges from Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley at Parliament this afternoon. In a short speech, Prime Minister Motley praised their efforts and encouraged them to continue being role models. You got a little nervous Independence Day when you saw all those people, no? And then this gentleman determined that he was not going to go up and leave her. And that's the kind of attitude that we want for young people in this country. So I want to congratulate both of you. And to say how proud I am to give you the Barbados Leadership Badges this morning. And to say that we will look for great things from both of you. And Youth Minister Adrian Ford was also present to witness the presentation and also commended the students for being trailblazers. There are young people who have achieved what a lot of us in this Barbados would love to aspire to, and that is greatness. And I'm happy to be here today to do what we would have done on Independence Day, and that is to recognize and honor them. And it is indeed a pleasure on behalf of not only me as Minister of Youth, but the entire government, because we believe that if we miss one, we miss one too many. And so I'm happy today to be able to along with our Prime Minister, to honor and pay respect and homage to these two fine young people. 
The Royal Barbados Police Force remains concerned about the number of young people who have found themselves on the wrong side of the law. Some 605 young people between the ages of 16 and 25 were arrested so far this year for committing several criminal offences. The figure was provided by team manager of the Princess Trust International Teen Program, Acting Inspector Roland Cobbler. For the period January to December 2016, 815 young people were arrested and charged, and last year 822 for the same period. Period. Mr. Cobbler says that the Princess Trust International Teen Program, which is geared towards at-risk youth, provides the force with an additional strategy for engaging young people and influencing them into being involved in positive alternatives. Sixteen young Barbadians are among the latest cohort to graduate from the 12-week program. Approximately 70% of the young persons who have completed this program so far have transitioned into work, educational or vocational training. And this, ladies and gentlemen, I think it deserves a round of applause. <laughs> From a policing perspective, the implementation of this program can be regarded as being significant for us based on the fact that this is the age range in which young people have been identified as being more predisposed of becoming involved in criminal behavior. And Assistant Commissioner in Charge of Crime, Euclid Thompson, says that in spite of everyday challenges, Barbados shouldn't lose sight of the value of human capital to nation building. Each of us must, must be made to feel that there is a purpose for us to fulfill on earth. It matters not what round of the ladder, the social ladder we are on, the level of, of our education, the magnitude of our possessions, the office or position we hold, the color of our skin, or the environment in which we, we socialize. All human beings, though differently gifted, are valuable and must be made to feel that way. Well, the Fair Trading Commission wants consumers to be wary of what it calls bait advertising. Director of Consumer Protection David Leslie Ward says that this is one of the seasonal trends that FTC is on the lookout for. She used institutions that advertise loans without providing all of the information up front as an example. If you are offering a product or a service and you're offering that um, you're offering, you're, you're issuing an ad where it has part of the amount that the consumer is supposed to pay. So suppose they say something like $6.99. You're also supposed to provide the rate of interest, the number of the installments, the deposit, if any, and the rate of interest that the consumer is supposed to pay. So in those circumstances, you know, it, it, it's really seasonal and it, and it depends on what is going on at the time. Miss Leslie Ward says another one of those trends more visible year-round are the signs reflecting that stores are not willing to refund or exchange purchases. So you would have no exchange, no refund signs. Those signs should not be placed in stores and we often do impromptu business checks to make sure that those signs are not visible. And what do you find when you do those checks? Within recent times we haven't been, we haven't, we haven't really been seeing as many as we had been initially but it is something that constantly happens. So as, as, as businesses close down and new businesses start, you find that you always have to continue to go around and shop because the business that was once in a, in a particular location might have closed and a, a totally different business has started and you have to provide those owners with the information. Right. But usually once we reach out and we educate those persons, they're usually willing to take down the signage. Well, Barbadians should know on Monday whether Miss Barbados Universe Megan Theobalds has made the top 20 of the competition. She was among contestants vying for one of the coveted spots in the 2018 Miss Universe pageant. During the preliminaries, the Barbados Beauty Queen showed her poise in the evening gown and swimsuit sections. Contestants from 94 countries and territories are participating in this year's pageant, surpassing the previous record of 92 contestants last year. The 67th Miss Universe pageant comes off on December 17th in Thailand.